Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Grand Seiko Spring Drive Diver. This is the SBGA029. You can see and you can purchase this automatic winding three day power reserve spring drive dive watch from Grand Seiko on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this Grand Seiko automatic spring drive dive watch. Now the timepiece is stainless steel 44.5 millimeters in diameter across the round of the case not including crown or crown guard. This is one of the most established and respected modern Grand Seiko sports references having originally been released in 2008 it's a veteran but it still looks every inch the modern dive watch and in terms of technology spring drive elevates this beyond anything else in the pure dive watch ranks. Now the timepiece is easy to wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, though 44 and a half across the round of the case. The watch is relatively compact from lug to lug at 50.7 millimeters across the wrist. This is an easy watch to wear even if your wrist is as small as 14 and a half centimeters. In my estimation, the watch would still fit securely and appear proportional. Now it's not as thick as it looks. 14 millimeters, there's a little bit of a sloped the flank of the bezel such that I believe you could wear this with a suit jacket cuff it wouldn't be an issue. Now there is one more dimension that bears mentioning because there are solid end links to this bracelet and they do swell the watch a little bit beyond the extremity of the lugs so that the true measurement across the wrist is 53 but again that's that's only about the distance of a 44 millimeter Panerai lug to lug so if you can wear that you can wear this. Now the watch does have a very impressive combination of closure mechanisms. There's a clamshell and twin trigger actuation for the clasp. So not only do you get the security of the clamshell, you get the precision and surefire positive release of twin triggers. That's not all you get as there's also a micro adjust. It is an incremental adjustment. You, you actually lift these two tabs right here, pull it up, pull out, and you can size with over an inch of adjustability. This is an excellent way to fit your watch over a wetsuit. And for those of us who are more desk divers, to fit the watch over a thick winter coat or sweater. Absolutely secure when closed. Very impressive, if perhaps over-engineered, but hey, that's luxury, getting more than you expect. Now the case and the bracelet are both hand-finished, which is an unexpected refinement in this price class. And I will say that you may initially be taken aback by the use of pins and sleeves for sizing the bracelet, but I assume some compromises had to be made considering case, movement, and bracelet are all hand adjusted and finished. And it also bears mentioning that Patek Philippe has adopted the same setup, claiming that screws have a tendency to back out in heavily used sports watch bracelets. I'll let you be the judge, but there's no denying that the caliber of the finish is excellent. As you can see, alternating polish and satin finish on the hoods, the flanks all of high polish, but then there's a bevel along the edge that's like something you would expect from Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantin, or Audemars Piguet. And if you think that's hyperbole, I actually have a third generation Vacheron Constantin overseas right here. You can see that hairline transitional bevel along the edge of the bracelet, and it's executed in exactly the same fashion with exactly the same optical clarity on the Grand Seiko. Now you get the same quality of finish on the case but with a greater balance of polish to satin. Now this is what Grand Seiko calls their Zeratsu finish, optically smooth. It's effectively black polishing like you would see on a Swiss movement but applied to the case and this is done by hand holding the case surface directly to a milling surface and I will say in person it is remarkably brilliant and it really does have a sort of flame surfacing quality about it in the way it reflects light. So this is distinct. Grand Seiko says that something different is going on with that polish and I have to say the tale of the eye is that yes indeed there is something different going on. But the watch also has a number of strong character lines as you can see there are two creases outboard and inboard on the lugs themselves and that's on both ends and both sides. The end links are solid and the watch feels all of a piece. You'll also note that the watch features a, a ADLC insert in the bezel. Now while it's not as scratch resistant as ceramic it also can't be shattered like ceramic. The bezel is deeply knurled. This is one of the best and most tactilely satisfying aspects of the watch. Even with wet hands, I, I can tell that I would be able to grasp and manipulate this bezel with absolute ease. 
and it's user friendly, it has a wonderful detent, it has a wonderful amount of resistance, just enough to feel like you have confidence in its resistance to moving unintentionally, but not so much that it feels like it's crude. I would actually compare the bezel feel of this watch more than anything else to a Blancpain 5015 series 50 fathoms, and that is heady company. Now the watch features an upscale set of hands indices and a number of dial details that really stand out as well chosen and well executed. Grand Seiko dials really need to be called out for looking more expensive than the watch in which they are contained. And the watch in which they're contained is impressive, but the hands are beautifully satin finished. The indices are all polished and applied. There's plenty of luminescent material such that the watch, with its rather dramatic cathedral style hours hand and broad arrow minute, is easy to see at night. Now the dial base itself is slightly glossy. You can see there's a power reserve at approximately seven o'clock on the dial. And then there's also a small and discreet date, albeit smartly executed with a high contrast black on white print. It doesn't disappear into the dial, but from a purely utilitarian perspective, it does make the date very visible. Now turning the watch over, you can't see what's underneath, but it is Grand Seiko's proprietary and still unique in the world spring drive system. While Piaget has been making some inroads into emulating this technology, Piaget has not put it in anything resembling a no holds barred sports watch or diver. So you're getting the Grand Seiko 9R65 spring drive automatic winding 72 hour power reserve. It has both hacking seconds so you can stop the seconds hand and synchronize your dive watch and I'll show you how that works. It also has a quick set function for the date so you can rapidly cycle to correct the date should the watch run down or encounter an irregular length month. The watch is 200 meters water resistant to protect that spring drive mechanism but there's more to spring drive than simple automatic winding and a long power reserve. Spring drive effectively takes a spring and a mechanical drivetrain and it uses that energy to turn a wheel that creates an induced electrical current which activates a quartz oscillator. And the quartz oscillator will, through back EMFs involved in the dynamo wheel, it's, it's called the governing wheel, the back EMF resistance force in conjunction with the quartz will speed up or slow down the movement of the drivetrain. And since it only moves in one direction, does the governor wheel, you'll note how the seconds hand sweeps continuously. It's not stepped, it's not starting and stopping very quickly. It is literally a continuous smooth sweep and that is an exclusive to spring drive. The shakeout is that you get a watchmaker assembled mechanical movement that's hand regulated that also has the accuracy of a quartz watch with roughly plus or minus 15 seconds per month. Now, where does that stand in relation to a mechanical chronometer? Well, consider that over 24 hours, a mechanical chronometer cannot lose more than four seconds or gain more than six. That's the level of precision we're talking about here. And again, you still have the soul of a mechanical watch in a timepiece that's finished externally and regulated and assembled internally by a master watchmaker. Now, the timepiece is Tough, versatile, handsome, large, stylish, beautifully made, and technologically fascinating. That's a lot of value in any watch, much less one that's affordable, accessible, and branded with a Seiko crest blazing at 12 o'clock. Don't underestimate it. It's a little giant, even at 44.5 millimeters. See it and own it on our website.